Hello, everyone. We'd like to welcome you to our first ever live chat broadcast. Thank you for joining us. My name is David Allen, and I'm a communications and outreach specialist with the Wildlife Resources Division. And I'm joined by Charlie Pillmaster, who's our state deer biologist. Uh, Charlie will be here to share some of his insight and answer some questions about the upcoming deer firearm season, which begins statewide this Saturday. I know there's a lot of excited hunters out there, so let's go ahead and get started. All right. Appreciate everybody showing up. Our first question comes from David, and he's curious as to why the southern zone uh, extends to January 15th during deer season, and the northern zone ends on January 1st. All right. If you look back in history, we have uh, we had a, a biological reason back then. Uh, there's a, a lot more hunting pressure in the northern zone and the deer population at the time that we were growing the deer population couldn't sustain that, uh, that higher level of harvest so we had to reduce those days. Uh, back then we still had that December break um, and we had a lot of different zones uh, in the past. Over the years those zones were slowly brought together and we ended up with the north and south zone and we had that December break. At the time when the December break uh, reached a lot of a popularity to close it. Uh, we had a lot of pushback and a lot of um, interest, um, particularly from small game hunters, to, uh, to maintain uh, more of that cooler weather season outside of, of deer hunting so uh, they could run their dogs. This didn't seem to be a problem in the southern zone, and that's kind of where we ended up at this point. So. Um, there's uh, there, there is still today a, a higher level of, of harvest and a higher, higher level of hunter, uh, hunter density in the northern zone, and those are the things that kind of relate to why there is that discrepancy between the north and south. Our next question uh, comes from Ken, and he's uh, curious about the acorn crop in northwest Georgia. Um, he's mentioned that he hardly sees any white oak acorns this year on the property that he hunts and uh, he observed during turkey season that there were no hardwood blossoms. Um, what are your thoughts for the reason on this? Well the uh, the mass crop is terrible this year up in the mountains unfortunately. Um, mass crops in general are very cyclical in nature meaning that uh, that they have uh, uh, a number of moderate years and then maybe a, a very good year and then a very poor year following that. Uh, we had a pretty good acorn crop last year, so this year we have uh, we have more for a crop. It's it's a uh, type of survival strategy for the trees. Um, unfortunately, it really impacts uh, the wildlife that depend on it, particularly bears and deer. So uh, that uh, that's where we're at this season. Um, it can it can make things uh, quite difficult, uh, either good or bad. With hunting, it's um, Kind of, kind of good to have a spotty acorn crop where you have areas that uh, certain trees that are producing and other trees that aren't. When you've got too many acorns, uh, game animals aren't moving very much because they don't have to move very far to find food. It makes them hard to hunt. And conversely, when uh, when you've got a little bit of food that's really spread out a lot, it makes it uh, makes it also hard to hunt. So having a few pockets of good food sources or good trees that are producing acorns and other areas that are not producing much at all makes for a real good hunting year. Unfortunately, we don't have that in North Georgia. Now you come down here in the Piedmont, different story. We're kind of more in that spotty mass crop, so I anticipate a good deer season this year. Okay. Um, this is kind of a related question. Um, maybe what, what are the uh, deer eating now and uh, what are what chances would be better at hunting over a food plot or where there are acorn trees? Uh, that's a great question. Uh, it really depends on on what type of area you're hunting in, what part of the state. Obviously, if you're in North Georgia, um, hunting on acorns is not a good idea unless you can find some. If you can find some, that's a great place to be. But generally, this time of year, the white oaks are dropping right now if you have them. And if the white oaks are dropping, deer drop everything else and go to them. So hunting on a food plot this time of year, uh, yeah, you may see some deer on a food plot, but generally those white oak acorns are the most preferred, and if they're around, that's where the deer are going to be. That's where you need to be. Okay. Uh, just want to remind everybody that uh, if you do have a question, you can email it to 
wrdinfo at dnr.state.ga.us and use the subject line deer season live chat. I've uh, got a few more questions in here. Um, this one, uh, you know, this tends to be a popular question this time of year. Uh, this comes from Tim. He uh, mentions that uh, most Georgia properties have experienced an increase in uh, coyote sightings, and you know many many hunters are seeing coyotes now from their deer stand. Uh, what's your in opinion on the overall impact that they're having on the deer population in Georgia, and uh, what should hunters do when they see them? Uh, you know, if, do you recommend that hunters you know shoot everyone that they see, or um, you know? let him go or um, you know he, he mentions he'd hate to mess up a deer hunt to shoot a coyote but maybe that's the right thing to do. Well I'll start with the last part of the question first. Um, uh, I would not mess up my deer hunt to shoot a coyote uh, and the reason that I say that is if you uh, what we found we've been doing a tremendous amount of research collaborative research with the University of Georgia and we found that coyotes have tremendous movement patterns they have, uh, can have very large home ranges, and their impact on deer is preliminary, uh, primarily limited to predation on fawns. So what that means is if you're on a several hundred acre property, even a couple thousand acre property hunting, if you shoot a coyote in deer season, likely by the time those fawns are dropping in May or June the following spring, those... Um, you'll have a whole other set of coyotes in there. So it's not really gonna do you much good on that property to shoot them or trap them in the deer season. If you want to reduce their impacts uh, through intensive trapping, uh, at least all the information we have now indicates that you need to do that immediately prior to and during fawning. Now getting to the part of the question where we have um, the, the statewide impacts of coyotes, there, there's no doubt that we've had an increase in coyote populate in the coyote population across the state, particularly in the last 15 years. Um, we don't have a lot of good ways to gauge that. Uh, the increase in the coyote population, uh, we have so few trappers these days to get information from. Um, but we have started asking uh, questions on our telephone survey of deer hunters uh, and and small game hunters on how many coyotes they're seeing and what kind of coyote harvest they're they're getting. But um, in general, the impact on, on the fawn crop is, is evident in what we call the fawn recruitment rate, which is basically just the ratio of, of fawns to the number of adult does. So that's how we measure the reproductive capacity of the deer herd. And as the coyote population increased starting approximately 15 years ago, uh, we started seeing a decrease in that fawn recruitment rate. Um, We've, uh, since that time, we've seen about a 26 to 28 percent decrease in that fawn recruitment rate. Um, at the time, in the early, from the late 90s all the way through the, to the mid-2000s, that actually did us a favor. We had too many deer at that point, and we were trying to get them down to a more reasonable level. Since the mid-2000s, we have uh, pretty much stabilized the population right around um, a little over a million deer. And, and held steady right there, uh, which is ideally where we'd like to be given the habitat characteristics we have across the state. So coyotes kind of aided in that process. However, that downward trend in the fawn recruitment rate, while it upticked uh, from 2005 to about um, 2010, um, which that also helped stabilize the deer population, but uh, that We've seen a declining trend lately, and that's one of the reasons that led into the decrease in doe days that you see in most counties across the state. So we do recognize that impact. We're uh, taking the steps right now to mitigate that impact, impact and maintain our objective of stabilizing the deer population at the current level. All right. Uh, our next question, we've got a couple about this. Uh, very popular topic uh, in Georgia right now. Um, the reduction to either sex days. Um, somebody's been hearing different things about doe days this season, um, and he just wants to get some clarification and see if you can elaborate a little bit on the, you know, the either sex days in general and uh, maybe the reason for uh, the reduction in either sex days. Okay. Um, 
the the dates that we have for most counties of the state now you definitely need to check the regulations guide on page 24 to see the specific days for your counties because some do differ but generally speaking for most counties of the state December 1st through 25th is buck only now we chose those specific dates in order to achieve a minor reduction in the doe harvest. Sure, we could have gone at the very front end of the season and, and taken out doe days then and seen a bigger increase uh, or a bigger decrease in the doe harvest, uh, but we're uh, taking a stepwise approach and, and taking smaller steps to try and achieve this goal of population stabilization. But for most counties of the state, December 1st through 25th is buck only. Uh, it's been a long time, uh, about a decade, since most counties of the state have, have even seen uh, a day that was buck only. So um, everybody needs to be mindful of that change. Um, the next question is another one related to uh, doe days. Um, why was there a cut in doe days on Chattahoochee National Forest? Well, the mountains, again, uh, kind of going back to the acorn crop, those deer populations up there are highly, highly dependent on that mass crop, and that makes it really hard to grow a deer population when you have poor mass crop years. The severe lack of early successional habitat on most of the national forest lands in, in the Chattahoochee National Forest make it difficult to support deer in, in those bad mass crop years. Therefore, uh, the best way for us to, to decrease the doe harvest and increase the number of deer to try and, and boost that population up is to decrease those doe days and uh, and depending on where you are in the national forest uh, you need to check the regs there too uh, there's some differences it's fairly limited on on the east side on the east side of i-75 uh, if you go on to the west side it uh, follows the county doe days but always check the regulations to be sure but those uh, the the north georgia mountains are one of the most difficult deer populations we have to manage because of that lack of early successional habitat. So uh, that's why you see such stricter regulations up there and uh, often a lot of uh, finer scale changes depending on uh, whether you're on national forest land or private land. So that's, that's what's going on up there. Okay. We got a question that actually just came in from, uh, from Ashley. Um, she is a, uh, writes for a newspaper in Bainbridge, Decatur County, um, and she's wondering if there's anything South Georgia hunters need to know about this upcoming season or be aware of, um, and is there anything going on with the deer population in that area that differs from the other regions? Uh, well, South Georgia, we do have a, a population decline, and we have seen a decline in the recruitment rates in South Georgia, although the southern portion of the state is not as severe as the northern portion. So uh, the main thing, the main thing that I want everybody to be aware of is this change in doe days, mainly because it's a fairly significant change and something we haven't seen, particularly in that part of the state, for quite a few years. Um, and another question, uh, I know this is probably a popular topic for a lot of hunters too, uh, is there a way to accurately predict when the rut will be in Georgia? Uh, there actually is. One of, the, one of the ways we get information to develop uh, maps and that sort of thing to pinpoint when the rut is on an annual basis, and it does vary quite a bit across the state, but the, the best information that we have is to collect breeding chronology data from deer, particularly the, the female segment, or only the female segment, rather. Um, but the best way to go about this is to first uh, to go online, do a, do a search, and see if you can find a fetal aging scale. It's a, it's a durable plastic scale that's uh, through, through past research, we can look at the length of, of a fetus collected from a, a doe in late season. Uh, always save your doe harvest until the very end of the season and try and collect those fetuses out, and you can lay them on this, this scale and it will tell you how many days old that fetus is from conception. So then you can backdate and look at the actual conception date for that fetus. Uh, once you get a good enough data set from 10 or 20 does over a couple of years, that will tell you when the average of, 
uh, the average number of does are breeding, the, the kind of week-long period that, that you see the most breeding. Um, typically what you uh, observe as the peak of the rut is actually a little bit before peak breeding because once those does uh, come into breeding condition, come into estrus, they'll, uh, they'll kind of stand and, and let the bucks tend them and the movement kind of decreases at that point. So what you view as peak rut is actually just prior to peak breeding. Um, and I know we we covered this some in our uh, in our video that we did uh, on your deer season forecast. Uh, thought maybe you just might want to get into uh, some of the different regions where the peak of the rut is in, in Georgia. Um, most of the state, um, most of the central part of the state is going to have a peak either in early to mid November. Um, when we get down along the coastal areas, they see an October rut. Most of those areas are probably just starting to get into rut now down along the coast. Uh, when you get up in the mountains, we see more of a December rut. Um, and a few areas of extreme north Georgia and extreme southwest Georgia have a early January rut. So that's something to, to keep in mind, particularly when you're taking off of work. And the rut, the rut essentially occurs at the same time every year on a given area. Now there's different factors that can influence the intensity of the rut, uh, basically the herd demographics, your ratio of bucks to does, your population density, um, weather can impact it, um, cooler temperatures help get deer moving in general and can increase the intensity of the rut that you see, um, but in general it, it, stays, it stays pretty much the same time every year. I've um, got another question that just came in from Tom. Um, Tom lives in DeKalb County, so uh, he's got some concerns about uh, hunting in the suburbs, particularly, you know, bow hunting um, after the start of the new year. Uh, he's got all of his required licenses. Uh, he just wants to make sure he's doing everything legal with the local authorities and uh, also wants to know if there's any concerns he should have uh, with bow hunting in the suburbs. Okay, I got a, that's a great question. I got a lot of good recommendations there. Um, First of all, uh, you want to find areas to hunt. Uh, it's always great to get um, written permission to hunt on areas. And if you find, particularly on small tracks in these suburban areas, you need to make sure you talk to as many neighboring property owners as possible where you think a deer might go if it doesn't drop on the property that you're hunting. Um, it's, it's better to ask permission ahead of time to, to retrieve a deer off of somebody's property than to than to go and ask them while it's already laying there. So um, it's always good to get that permission ahead of time. Now, there are no state laws that uh, prohibit discharge of archery equipment um, across the state. However, there are some local ordinances that might prohibit that. So you always need to check with both the city and the county government, if city if you're in city limits, um, and county government if uh, if you're in city or in just the county and see if there's any ordinances that impact uh, archery hunting at all uh, basically related to the discharge of archery equipment. Uh, if you can't find that information on the, on the web then you need to contact the county sheriff's department for the county and or the city police department and get that information from them. Um, once, you, once you've got that information together um, you're, you're pretty much good to go in most of those metro counties. You get extended dates to hunt, but we strongly encourage uh, people in, in the suburbs of Atlanta and parts of metro Atlanta where you can get access to hunt, we strongly encourage that. That's our only form of population control on those uh, burgeoning deer populations that we have in metro Atlanta. So we strongly encourage that, but you need to do the right thing, get the permission to hunt on the property and talk to the neighboring property owners and help smooth it over before you have uh, an incident because it can be real touchy and uh, stay on your best behavior, be, be polite and courteous to people and that really goes a long way. All right. uh, got another question here. Um, is there a way to sign in online for wildlife management area hunts? Uh, yes and no. We have, uh, we have sign in available for the, uh, the non-quota sign in hunts. Uh, you can go to georgiawildlife.com forward slash hunting to find that and see what hunts are available for online sign-in. 
that is not available for our quota hunts and our check-in hunts. Uh, we, we need that information to be as accurate as possible on those hunts, uh, so we still require uh, check-in at the check station on those other hunts. Um, as of right now, uh, the, only, the only hunts that are available for that are the, are the sign-in hunts. Um, looks like that's all the questions we've got coming in so far. Um, I guess we'll uh, go ahead and close it out. Um, you know, you're, you're welcome to continue to email us questions. Uh, we, we can respond to you offline uh, if we didn't get to a question. Uh, we'd like to thank everybody for joining us today. Special thanks to Charlie for joining us and sharing some of his insight for the upcoming season. Uh, we want to wish all of our hunters a safe and successful deer season. Uh, we've also recorded this broadcast, and we'll make it available on our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Georgia Wildlife. Uh, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And for more information on hunting in Georgia, you can visit GoHuntGeorgia.com. Thanks, everybody, and have a great season out there. Be safe and wear your harnesses when you climb.